snack Me and you gonna have a little chat about books Hi guys! So I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing was sent to me by the author. It's an independently published one so it may not be one you've heard of. The book I'm going to be talking about is called They Mostly Come Out at Night and it is by Benedict Patrick who is I believe an Irish author. Accepted this one largely based off of the cover art I will admit because I think you'll all agree that the cover art is beautiful, I love it, and the fact that the actual blurb sounded pretty intriguing to me. I didn't really know any anything about it, it didn't have many reviews, but I thought why not take a risk, why not take a chance and hope that I find a really good book. And I'm happy to say that I did really enjoy reading this and I read it in one sitting. I read it during the Tome Topple Readathon, I think you guys might have seen me talk about it in my vlog very briefly, but I definitely enjoyed it and I read it in one sitting just sitting down and marathoning through. The only slight flaw that I have with this book is that it's a debut book and it slightly suffers from pacing issues. With that said, I think the ideas are really interesting and I think the story itself is really interesting. So let's get into what it's all about. At various points throughout reading this book, I was reminded of Peter B. Brett, of Bradley Bolio and of Brent Weeks, who are three authors that I really, really love. So that's a positive. The thing that reminded me a lot about Brent Weeks was the fact that this was a really rip-roaring, fast read. A lot of the plot is very quick. You get told one thing, then another thing happens, then another thing happens. It's not overwhelming, but it definitely doesn't have a really slow lull at any point. I felt like it was quite action-heavy and we get a lot of stuff going on with our main character and with the other characters that our main character meets. The thing that reminded me of Peter B. Brett's work is the fact that in this world, at night, people don't go out. They actually lock themselves in their cellars or basements because they know that something horrible is outside. Something every night comes to every village in the surrounding area and basically ravages and attacks the outside of the houses. They believe it might be wolves. They're not really sure what it is. No one really knows because no one has seen it and survived. So basically, people are just better off hiding away and not getting into trouble with these horrible creatures that mostly come out at night. We have a main character who we're following and our main character is called Lonan and Lonan is basically a kind of outcast in his village. He actually has been blamed by various people in the village for the death of his father and for the death of his best friend's family and her mauling. She used to be best friends with him, they used to get on really well and have a great relationship, they believe they might even get married one day, but unfortunately at the start of this book it's been a couple years since they have talked and everyone in the village just believes that he was the reason these people died a couple years ago and so he's basically been kicked out by everyone, doesn't really have a home anymore, doesn't really have a family anymore and he's just staying with a friend of his in the village who is an old wise woman. The second storyline that we're following besides Lonan himself is told through Lonan's dreams and that is a storyline focused on the Magpie King who is supposedly a creature of almost legendary level in this world. People have always spoken about him. They've always said that the Magpie King is the reason more people don't die. He is the protector. He is the one who looks out for them. But no one has seen the Magpie King or been to his palace in a very, very long time from Lonan's village. So he's kind of more of a mystery and enigma and legend than he is a reality for them. But Lonan dreams about the Magpie King and he dreams about the story of the Magpie King and what's been happening with him. And that is the second storyline. The third thing we have, because this book is kind of a three-part deal, is we have little inserts between each of the chapters, which are kind of like a mini folk or fairy tale story, which I really enjoyed. Some of them are adaptations from Brothers Grimm stories, some of them are adaptations from various other countries, sort of origin stories, and some of them are just made up. And I really enjoyed those particular parts because I think they not only fleshed out the world a little bit more, but they gave you just a little bit of a breather. They gave you a little bit of a moment to sort of enjoy that miniature story within this much bigger one. And I like that a lot. I really love the idea of a story within a story. I think that this book really focuses on telling of stories and it's a really big part of the book so I liked that a lot. The magic within this world actually comes in two different forms. We have the form of Nax which is basically most people within the world, pretty much all the people in this world, 
will develop a neck of some kind that suits their lifestyle. So if you grow up in the house of the village healer, then you're probably going to develop a healing neck yourself, which basically means you're just a bit better than the average person at whatever it is you do. You have a much more intuitive, much more insightful ability to use this neck, whatever it might be. So you can get like housework necks, healing necks. You can even get a very dark side of necks, which is like controlling other people's minds or persuading other people. So there are lots of different things out there. And it's quite an interesting idea. Unfortunately, at the point where we meet the story, Lonan, our main character, has not actually developed a neck, which only helps to isolate him even more from the rest of the village. As I said at the beginning of this review, I think the one thing that I didn't love so much was the pacing of this book. I do think that I got to about the 80% mark and I was really enjoying it, very hooked into the story, very action packed it was all kind of roaring along and I was liking it a lot and I said to my boyfriend who was sat next to me whilst I was reading it I said I really hope there's a second book in this series because I feel like there's just not going to be enough time to really do the ending of this book in this one I feel like we're gonna need that second part of the story and I felt like it just it wasn't gonna happen I basically assumed there would be a second book which is wrong as far as I know this is a standalone story and it definitely does all wrap up in the ending however I felt like it all wrapped up so fast that it wasn't believable that's not to say it's bad because I think the ideas are there and I think if they'd been longer it would have worked but I do think that this book needed to either be a lot longer or to have a second part to it I think that really would have helped us to fully connect with the characters to get the story to the level I wanted it to be at but as I said this is a debut book and as a debut book I kind of give it a little bit of leniency and I think the actual story the ideas were fun were interesting were exciting so if you want a book that's really fast paced that's action packed that has a lot going on that has some great character moments that has some really interesting details that I was very intrigued by and very much liked and also has a little bit of emphasis on sort of fairy and folktale this might be a book that you want to pick up I was definitely very grateful to receive it from the author and I definitely am glad that I read it I will certainly look out for other stuff that Benedict Patrick brings out in the future because I feel like his next book is going to be the one where I really start to enjoy his stuff a lot at the moment I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars which is still a really good rating for me it definitely means I still really liked it definitely well worth the read as I said I read this in one sitting it's a super short book like 200 ish pages I'll put a link to it down below on Amazon or wherever you can buy it that is my review of this one I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it if you've heard of it before if not what do you think of it now that I've told you a bit about it thank you all for watching I will see you all in my next video bye thank you for watching my video today go pick up a book then come back and chat with me again